movement in it. And um, I think it is a great time to honor what is best about Grenada. And our cocoa and chocolate is one of those things that's the very best in the world. Two students from TAM CC also had paintings on display at the Cocoa Chocolate Art Exhibition. I was just thinking a leaf print on a dark canvas would look good, so I tried it. Okay. And people seem to like it. I have Miss Chocolate Hair. Um, love chocolate. Um, bittersweet and cocoa. Right. So I like this one right here. Tell me about. I'm seeing all the tears coming out of her. Is that tears? Yeah. She, well, the woman, um, she is kind of brown skin to see as from the start. Um, so as she cries the chocolate, it influences the color of her skin. So she turns into a true chocolate woman. U.S. Charged Affairs Louis Krishok enjoyed every bit of the art on display and expressed his pleasure in supporting this venture. We're very happy to be able to support the arts. This is a wonderful occasion, uh, this art exhibit for, for Chocolate Week here in Grenada. A wonderful example of how, how art and commerce meet. And it's always a pleasure to be able to support events like this, to see the beautiful pieces, and to see the rich colors which you experience as you move about the island to see them memorialized in these works. It's just a pleasure. Also on Monday was the unveiling of Juve, a special brand chocolate produced by the Diamond Chocolate Factory in St. Mark. It's produced with 100% Grenadian chocolate and will soon be available on the Grenada market. Partners for the 2014 Chocolate Fest include True Blue Bay Resort, Belmont Estate, Mount Cinnamon Beach Hotel and Rosemont Plantation. Karen Moraine Alexander reporting for the GIS News. Thank you, Karin. You're watching the GIS News. We'll be right back after the break. Shaking, shaking, then said the story we hear, babe. Crack, 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 crack. And the roof had gone. Man, I was so scared, I nearly wet myself. Only those who have lived it can truly understand the devastating fury of a hurricane's wind. The house across the road just get up and roll over. Hurricane force wind. It's a hazard. Hazards. Take control. Reduce your loss. You can hurricane proof your home. For example, Make your roof more wind-resistant by using screws instead of nails in its construction. Find out more about hurricane force winds and other hazards at your local disaster office. A message from your national disaster office and Sidera. Welcome back to the broadcast. A formal announcement will be made by the St. George's University next week of a partnership entered into with the government of Grenada. Health Minister Dr. Claris Modest Cohen says the changes will significantly impact on health care and education in the country. She was addressing the media during a post-cabinet briefing on Tuesday. It covers a number of areas um, in terms of the, the training of physicians. Uh, there is an increase from 10 to 15 physicians. And you would also have heard me um, lament on the fact that over the many years that SGU has turned out Grenadian physicians, we do not have many to show for it. There are a few who have um, given back to this country and have made a significant uh, contribution to our health care. But the majority, um, they do stay out in greener pastures. And so as we look at more physicians, we are also looking at um, how to morally, in the first instance, uh, encourage them to come back and serve their country, even if it were for a limited period. Grenada is hosting more than 100 delegates from the Caribbean, the U.S., Canada, Latin, North and South America for the 34th Annual Convention of the Caribbean Association of Pharmacists. 
The convention will be officially opened at the Radisson Beach Resort on Wednesday evening. It begins at 6 p.m. The ceremony will be officially addressed by Governor General, Her Excellency Dame Cecile Lagrenade, Health Minister, the Honorable Clarice Bedes Cohen, and the presidents of the Caribbean and Grenada Associations of Pharmacists, respectively. That's news. Sports is next with Trevor Thwaites. Hi, I am Junior Murray. Let's keep our athletes and sports clean. No dope in sports. West Indies in Bangladesh promising exciting cricket in the Dhaka Bank series starting Wednesday in St. George's. There is uncertainty about the future West Indies cricket coach Otis Gibson. A run for Ecolo makes a positive start in the 2014 GTIC Under 14 Boys tennis tournament in San Salvador. This is another GI Sports. Hello, I'm Trevor Thwaites. Starting with cricket. Both the West Indies and Bangladesh are promising to play exciting cricket in the three-match Dhaka won the series starting in St. George's on Wednesday. West Indies captain Dwayne Bravo says that the players are looking forward to the series after participating in the Caribbean Premier League, the CPL. He says that the West Indies are aiming to start positively and build impressively towards the World Cup. It's good to see the guys have been active. It's a different format of the game now. Obviously, 50 overs is a longer form than T20. But at the same time, it's good to see guys coming off the back of a lot of cricket behind their back. So we look forward to the beginning of a new series against a very excited Bangladesh team. Uh, we ourselves looking forward to it. It's going to be three games, three hard games, uh, with the first two being held here in, in Grenada. So we look forward to a great challenge. and for the guys to get back into West Indies colours again. So the last five to six weeks, you know, a lot of us been split up. But so it's good to see us back together again to represent the region. And we just want to start good tomorrow, please God, and, and hopefully start with a win so that to do our confidence good as a group. Bravo said that the team had been striving to lift its game and become more consistent, indicating that they are striving to climb back up to the summit. It will always be flowing as, 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 um, you know, as long as we're playing. So we, we always want to win cricket games. We never turn up to lose games. We always want to compete and, and, and win games and stuff, win series. So um, lately we've been showing a lot of positive signs. Um, we, we won two games in New Zealand. We won in India um, against England as well. We, we won games as well. So there's a lot of positive signs. We are just unable to finish off series. But, you know, we start, at least we start somewhere. So, you know, this series is going to be very important for us. We have 10 games before we play our first World Cup game. So that's definitely part of, 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 of building a team culture of, of winning games and winning series. Bravo says that they have not been affected by the loss of a coach, Otis Gibson, and as two professionals have been picking up the pieces. We are all professional players, so we as players know what we have to do to prepare ourselves to play a series. So whether, um, you know, whether if there is a coach or there is not one there to coach us or anything to supervise us, we all know what we have to do as individuals to prepare ourselves. So I think um, what happened already dealt with. We have no control over it. We just have to move on 
I like to start well in the series and that's what's important. Someone is in charge, uh, Stuart Williams. He was there before, so the players are comfortable with him and have a lot of respect for him as well. So um, it did not hamp our preparation. Obviously, some of the guys arrived this morning, some came in last night. So today was our first training session. We actually trained together as a, as a team with everyone involved. So, And we had a very good session today. So it's, it's good to see all the guys ready and fit and looking forward to tomorrow's game. West Indies won the cricket captain, Dwayne Bravo. His opposite number, Mushrika Rahim, says that the Tigers, as Bangladesh are called, will be fighting as true Tigers in the jungle to make a meal of the West Indies. He admits that it's a big challenge, but assures fans that they will be fighting tooth and nail to overcome the enemy. When we are playing ODI cricket, at least like back home, we are really good, but overseas we are having some problem with the consistency. So we are addressed that and we are really looking forward to do well in here. And as you said, yeah, without Sakib, it's going to be a bit difficult, but I think there is a couple of young players coming through along the way. So hopefully they will have a good opportunity to show their skills against this very good West Indian team. So I think it's, it's going to be a very big challenge for us, but I think all the boys are ready and they are very hungry to do well in the park. So. In pen and paper, probably we are not that strong team, but hopefully if we can do the right things in the middle and execute our plans, and hopefully it will be a great series for us. Rahim admits that the loss of Shakib Alassan, their top player, is a big loss, but promises to draw on his inspiration to drive the team forward. Uh, obviously, he's been the best player for the last uh, eight or nine years, so we're definitely going to miss him. But at the same side, there is come uh, like few youngsters coming through in the last uh, last series against India. So we are looking forward to give them a good chance against this great in West Indian team. So it's a nice opportunity for us to see, like because uh, the World Cup is very near. So we want to see how the young players are doing well. So let's hope for the best, and we will give our best shot against them. And it, it's going to be a very difficult series without Sakib. But I think. I have faith in my young, young players, so I think if they are performed really well along the seniors, I think it will be a great series. Meantime, there is uncertainty surrounding the uh, future West Indies coach Otis Gifton for the Dhaka Bank series uh, against Bangladesh uh, starting here on Wednesday. Rumours surfaced on Monday that Gibson will not be with the team for the ODIs, which led to speculations about his future as West Indies head coach. WICB manager, media manager Philip Spooner confirmed this morning at the, at the National Stadium in St. George's that Gibson will not be with the team. There's been a lot of discussion as to head coach Otis Gibson. Just inform you that Mr. Gibson will not be with the team for this series and uh, struggling to go back uh, in the position of. He still remains assistant coach in title, but between himself and the captain of the great formats. Take charge of the team. So just so that you're fully aware, so that there's no more media speculation, no more media um, intrusion, Mr. Gibson will not be the best team for the series. Thank you. But there must be speculation because he did not give a reason why uh, Gibson was not put the team. Here lies the speculations, of course. Meanwhile, news from the Caribbean Cricket.com is that the WICB is favoring former South African and Australia coach Mickey Arthur as the new head coach of the West Indies team. The report says that just days after WICB changed its selection panel, they continued their house clearing Monday by removing Otis Gibson as the coach of the regional team. News from the Trinidad Tobago Guardian is that he is likely to be replaced by the former South African and Australia coach Mickey Arthur. Arthur was the coach of the Jamaica Talawas at the, at the recent Lima Call Caribbean Premier League right here in the Caribbean. Gibson, the former all-rounder who played two test matches and 15 won the Nationals for the West Indies, served as the England coach, bowling coach too, from late 2007 before taking charge of the original team in February of 2010. National Junior Tennis Champion Ron Fuikolo has made a positive start in the JTEC Under-14 Boys Tournament that's on at this time in San Salvador. Ecolo beat Jamaican Miles Harrison 4-love four four love in the opening game on Monday. 
Today he was up against a Mexican player in the second round in a second round match. Uh, 48 players from 15 countries in Central America and the Caribbean are competing in the one-week tournament, which ends on Saturday. The players have been divided into 16 round robin groups of three, with the top two qualifying for the playoff. Uh, officials are confident that Okikolo will go all the way and win the